Hi, my name is Sean, and I'll be walking you through how to get started using HiQnet devices with Muse. HiQnet is a proprietary protocol for Harman audio devices such as BSS DSPs, Crown amplifiers, and Soundcraft mixing consoles. It allows these devices to talk to each other on an IP network and is configured using the Audio Architect software. In this tutorial, we're going to use a BSS Blue DSP with our Muse controller. The first thing we'll need to do is to launch Audio Architect and open the project file. Once the file is opened, we'll need to export the JSON parameters zip file. This file contains information about all the processing blocks in the project and will be used in a later step. To do this, click on File in the top left and then Export Parameters as JSON. Enter a name for this file and click Save. Take notice that the file extension is going to be aa.zip. Before moving on, make sure that the Audio Architect file has been loaded to the DSP. Next, we'll open a new browser session and enter the Muse controller's IP address and log in. Head over to the System tab and select Extensions from the dropdown. Here, we'll make sure the HiQnet extension is started. If not, simply click on the Mojo HiQnet extension and click Install. Now head on over to the Plugins tab and select HiQnet from the dropdown. Take note of the Node ID field. This is a randomly generated number that identifies the Muse controller on the HiQnet network, but can be changed if it conflicts with any other device's ID. Now we can load the parameters JSON zip file we exported from Audio Architect. Click on the Choose File box and select the exported file. This is the file with the aa.zip extension. Click Open. Now that the file is selected, Click the Upload button to send the file to the Muse controller. When the transfer is complete, you should see the file listed over here on the right side of the page. You'll also see the name of the DSP from the Audio Architect file, followed by its node address with a .desc file extension. This is how the Muse controller associates the Audio Architect file with the actual DSP in case there are multiple DSPs on the network. You can see the same information right here in Audio Architect. Head back over to the System tab and this time select Devices. Notice that in the Devices list, there's already a BSS DSP listed even though we didn't create one. This device is also not editable or removable. That's because once we started the HiQnet extension, the Muse controller found the DSP on the IP network automatically. Now we're ready to look at some programming in Muse Automator. I've already started a flow that includes all the nodes needed, and I also have a simple UI loaded on the touch panel. This touch panel file has just three simple buttons, Mic Volume Up, Mic Volume Down, and Mic Mute. Additionally, there's a display only bar graph to show the current mic level. In a previous video, you learned about the AMX specific nodes and how to create your first flows. But in this example, we'll be looking at three additional nodes that are required for the desired functionality. Starting with the mute button programming, you'll see some familiar nodes. There's a UI control node to receive the mute button push, followed by a status node to find out what the current mute state is. Double clicking this node and looking in the audio dropdown, you can see that the HiQnet device has all of the DSP blocks that were configured in the Audio Architect project listed here with their respective controls. From here on out, the HiQnet device looks pretty much like any other device we have configured on the controller. Here we're looking at the state of the mic gain blocks mute control. Next, we're using a switch to determine whether we want to send a mute on or off command to the DSP. In the next flow, we're setting the button feedback based on the actual mute state using an event node. Double-clicking this node, we can see in the drop-down under Enumeration that we will receive the text muted or unmuted depending on the mute state. Selecting any here means that we will be reacting to both states. However, 
The command node that sets the button feedback is expecting a Boolean true-false value, so we have to convert the message to make these nodes compatible. This is where a new node is being used, the change node. Double-clicking on the change node reveals how we're converting the strings muted and unmuted into Boolean true-false before passing it on to the next node. The change node is a very easy way of converting messages from one type to another or modifying messages to suit your needs. Moving down to the mic volume up and down controls, we see our second new node, the trigger node. In this example, the trigger node is being used to repeat commands at a regular interval in order to ramp the level up or down while the button is held. Double-clicking on this node, we can see that it is configured to send true and then resend it every 250 milliseconds. This is triggered to start whenever the node's input sees a Boolean true value which is received when the button is pushed and it makes the following command node send a bump up or bump down command accordingly. To stop this, the trigger is reset when message.payload equals false which it receives when the button is released. Lastly, we see our third new node in the flow that updates the touch panel bar graph to reflect the actual mic level on the DSP. The range of values for the mic level on the DSP is minus 80 to plus 10. However, the range in our touch panel's bar graph is 0 to 255, so we have to convert one range of values to another using the range node. Double-clicking on the range node shows that we are mapping the input range of message.payload from minus 80 to plus 10 over to the range of 0 to 255, limiting the values to the target range and rounding the resulting value to the nearest integer. Now our mic volume level and touch panel bar graph track perfectly. So now you know how to take a BSS DSP using HiQnet and create a new device using the JSON properties file exported from Audio Architect and integrate it into your Muse Automator flows while also learning a few more nodes you can use in Muse Automator. Thanks for watching this Muse tutorial.